Hello again everybody, I'm Larry Hamilton. Welcome to my YouTube painting class. Uh, glad you're with me today. We're going to be doing an oil painting <clears throat> on 11 by 14 canvas. And uh, it's a photo that I got from our Facebook uh, group called Photos for Artists from a photographer named Jane Davidson. Um, it's a seascape photo of an area in Vancouver, British Columbia called Tofino. It's a very beautiful area, I understand. I haven't been there. But uh, some of the things I've found online and uh, uh, looked at are look very, very interesting, very nice. Um, <clears throat> so um, I want to go over to my computer now and show you a couple things I did with the photo and uh, explain how we're going to paint this thing. So hold on, I'll be right back. Okay, so here we are on my computer here. This is the original photograph uh, from Jane Davidson. Um, it's, it's a basic, uh, very kind of a mild seascape scene, not large waves, but uh, um, it's all kind of blue. And uh, a lot of the uh, um, paintings you see done in the Bob Ross style have a lot of blue in them. So I thought I might want to change this. So I'll sh talk about that in a second. Um, Here's the, uh, the grid, which I always put over, my 4 by 5 grid. Each of these squares are about 2 and 3 quarter inches, I would say, to make 11 by 14 canvas fit. They're just slightly less than that, but anyway, that's what I put on uh, and use that as my guide to uh, making the painting. Um, and as I usually do, I did a, a value map, and uh, this is a value map that I made. Um, <clears throat> So I have about three or four values in here from white to really, really dark. And uh, so I'll try to make that, give it depth perception and, uh, and uh, make a nice scene out of it. And then one more thing I've done since uh, this had a lot of blue, I thought well, I'm going to maybe change it and we'll make it a seascape type of painting. So I did a color map. So this is the same value map that I had, the same uh, segments the same uh, shapes and uh, so I just put about four colors in there and use sort of the yellow uh, orange color for like a sky for like a, uh, a sort of a sunset sky and uh, so I'm basically taking all the blue out of it so I hope you like that and uh, that's what we're going to paint today and that's what we're going to work on so uh, I'll go back now to my easel and we'll get started I'll go through the paints and brushes and we'll get going hold on <clears throat> okay, so I'm back here at my uh, easel now, and I want to uh, show you the, the, the uh, brushes and the paints that I'm going to use, and, uh, and how we're going to make this a sunset seascape instead of a really bright, sunshiny day. So here's my uh, palette, and uh, I have uh, my colors on here, my Bob Ross colors. I have my brushes. I don't know if I'm going to use all these brushes, but I certainly will use this uh, big one-inch brush. I will use this fan brush. may use this filbert a little bit, and uh, my script liner, I'm pretty sure I'll use that. And I have my trusty painting knife over here that I'll uh, use, I'm sure, when we put some of the uh, uh, mountains in and some of the, the, the parts of the uh, landscape that need, need this uh, I can really use the knife with. Okay, so let's go through the uh, paints. Here's my uh, Bob Ross colors, titanium white. Notice there's no blue, no phthalo blue, no Prussian blue. Midnight black, Van Dyke brown, dark sienna, alizarin crimson, a touch of sap green. I don't think there's really no green in this painting to speak of. Uh, the original photo did have some uh, green um, trees and stuff in the background, but they really kind of missed it out. You couldn't see them very well. Uh, cad yellow, yellow ochre, Indian yellow, and bright red. There's not much bright red either. Um, and I have uh, ultra violet here. This is a Grumbacher color. So that's the paints. Uh, that's the brushes. I also have my uh, liquid white here that I'm going to use. I'm going to actually tint this liquid white a little bit. I haven't done that before. I'm going to put a little bit of yellow in it and sort of make an underpainting of a sort of a light <coughs> yellow, uh, sort of Indian yellow maybe color. And uh, so that's what we're going to do now. So I think everything's running. All my cameras are running. My broadcast is working, and I think you're able to see it. Um, I'm really happy about that. I don't know if you ex noticed I had trouble getting the broadcast to work. Um, <laughs> i explain in just a second what, uh, what happened here. Uh, 
I use a, I use a software product on my uh, broadcast computer called uh, Wirecast. Um, they came out with a new version of that software toward the end of the year. And at the same time, YouTube changed their uh, studio that accepts the broadcasts, and they changed the way you had to had to get them started. So uh, always before, I used Wirecast and YouTube. When I started broadcasting on my computer here, uh, it would automatically be picked up by YouTube, and it would start the broadcast. Uh, the new software, the new version of the studio, uh, requires that I have to push a button on the YouTube uh, website to get the broadcast started. I didn't realize that when I did my last uh, live class, so I kind of screwed that up. So I think I got it figured out now. If you're all watching and able to see this, uh, you know that uh, at least the broadcast is working, and I figured out that little problem. All right, so let's get going. I want to zoom in on my uh, canvas here and get going. You see my three photos at the top. I have my the original photo here, I have my color map and I have my value map. So I'll be using those three to sort of make sure I got the right values, make sure I got the right tones and colors. And uh, that will uh, hopefully help me do a good painting out of this. Um, let me see if I can uh, get this lined up for, so I can have my palette overlay and see if that works. All right. So the broadcast should now be showing you the uh, <clears throat> canvas along with the palette overlaid in the lower right hand corner. All right, so first thing we do is we always start with uh, liquid white. I'm going to cover this. I have a very, very light sketch. You can't even see it. I've got some little pencil marks on here that kind of indicate where this mountain is here and where the background is and where this big uh, cliff coming down here is. Um, and I'm going to paint over all that anyway. So that's sort of my uh, dilemma when I use Bob Ross colors is that I you tend to wipe out the, the uh, uh, you wipe out the uh, any any sketch or anything you have, and it uh, it doesn't uh, doesn't work for you. So you can't really use sketches too well when you do the Bob Ross wet and wet. So let's see what this looks like. I'm going to put on a very light coat of uh, sort of a yellow color here. This is basically Indian yellow, uh, Bob Ross Indian yellow, and uh, liquid white. So I'm I'm using the liquid white to get it to flow. And I'm using a little bit of the uh, um, Indian yellow to uh, give it this nice tone, or sort of an orange-yellow tone. It's got a little more orange in it, uh, maybe at the top. And I want to sort of fade it down um, as we go, put maybe a little more in there at the top. So this is all the underpainting I'm working on. Uh, this. Uh, And I'm just going to kind of fade it down and get it to fade out into something that would look like it's a sky, uh, a sunset back here in the back. So uh, see my uh, pencil marks through here. Don't like that particularly. I um, don't know if I can paint over them or not. This uh, Indian yellow is a very transparent paint and uh, you can just about see everything through it. So uh, I'll just do this. We'll come on down. I'm just going to kind of fill this all in with uh, whatever colors in the brush um, and gradually get it lighter and lighter as we go down. This side over here is going to be all uh, dark. Um, but I want to have this underpainting of this light yellowish color in here that uh, I'm going to be using um, and painting over it as we go. I may wish I hadn't put all that those little marks on there for my uh, guides, but you need some kind of guide I think to help you uh, figure out where things are going. Uh, so I'm getting all this canvas totally covered here and uh, I'm going to come back and maybe put a little more of the uh, Indian yellow here in the top make it just a little darker at the top and uh, I may not do much more than that uh, for the uh, sky I may put a picked up a little red there uh, I could put some uh, 
clouds here maybe if I want to put a little few brown spots of some clouds but pretty much that is what I want to have there um, it looks like when I look on my uh, monitor behind me here it looks like it could be a little darker even yet in the top so let's come back and put just a little more a few more dark places in here <clears throat> in the corners darken them down maybe a little more and uh, so uh, since I've never been to Tofino I don't really know what a sunset looks like around there I may have it even totally backwards I don't even know if this particular view would have a uh, it will have some sort of a sunset it'll have some sort of a sky I'm sure of that but uh, this sort of a yellowish sky but I don't know if the Sun would be placed right here or uh, where it would be I'm sort of making that up and uh, so if you've been to Tofino and you know where the Sun sets on this particular beach um, you can sort of correct me and uh, and tell me I'm wrong okay so that's the uh, underpainting for the whole thing I'm a little more color in here where I want it to be just a little darker maybe in this area and uh, that's that's the uh, that's the beginning so uh, I'll leave that for now and uh, get my uh, maybe wipe this brush out a little bit um, we can start now putting in this background back here that's going to have uh, some uh, little more uh, ochre and brown maybe some uh, I want the colors to come toward me and I want them to uh, keep this yellowish color on. So I'm mixing dark sienna with my um, Indian yellow. And we're going to come right in here somewhere and if I can find my spot again and right in here we're going to start putting in some of this mountain in the background here it goes all the way over into this area okay a few more dark places come down like this Something like that it could be a little more uh, have a little more definition on the top um, it's a little more bumpy than this put a few spots in there all right um, I want it to be darker at the top of these mountains because I want it to uh, sort of fade into a, a little bit of a mist that I want to be below it so I'm just going to touch in a few spots here with this dark sienna like this and we're going to get a little bit of this uh, misty look to the bottom of these mountains think maybe while I'm at it while I got this brush I'm gonna go back and put a few clouds in that sky kind of it's kind of barren up there so let's don't leave that while we're too soon let's go put a few things in here like this and sort of uh, just put some things there I don't want it to look like mountains I want it to look like sky so let's do the old X stroke on these things and make them look like there's some clouds up here yeah that's not too bad pick up some spots here it gives it a little bit of texture in that sky so it's not just one big barren area up there 
sort of fade it. Let's make it a little darker on the right. I'm, I'm just ad-libbing here, folks. I don't have anything to go with other than my color map and my original photo. Original photo had no clouds in it. Um, my color map was pretty basic, just big blocks of color. Um, so that's starting to look kind of the way I was envisioning it. Uh, down here, I'm going to use a little more of my uh, <clears throat> white. I'm still using this one inch brush. I have not done anything to clean it out. I'm just wiping it out with my uh, paper towel and I'm going to put just a little bit of mist in here like this. I want it to uh, reflect that mist around here. I'm going to put another row of trees under here so um, I just want that to, to uh, lighten up a little bit. And there, there is lighter paint underneath it, but it's not white. It um, has that yellow tint in it. So I put just a touch of liquid white on my brush and uh, I'm just feathering that in. Okay, <clears throat> so much for that. All right, let's... Uh, Let's put another row of trees across here. Um, they're going to be a little darker. I'm going to use a different brush. I think I'm going to use my uh, filbert brush. I don't use that very often on these Bob Ross paintings, but there is a filbert brush that uh, Bob Ross uh, with his name on it. Um, this particular one is a uh, from. Uh, it's a floral brush, but it doesn't make any difference. Uh, it's still the same type of bristles. So in this area here, we're going to put in some more brown and uh, we're going to make it look like we've got a whole uh, bunch of trees and stuff in here. And I'm going to leave them all this sort of this brown shade with a little bit of this uh, Indian yellow in them, but I want them to be darker. They have to be darker than what's uh, behind them so they come forward. Right? We want these to come forward. So I'm just tapping, just tapping the brush and I'm trying to keep it below this area of mist so you can see the, the uh, row of trees going across here. And they come down and they go touching the water here somewhere. There's actually another bit of mountain or something over this way. Um, I'm using the original photo to sort of give me this idea of what this really looks like back here. But just tap. Let the let whatever comes off the brush come off the brush. And uh, this comes down yeah about right into here somewhere is where the bottom of that is and where it uh, touches the water. I actually have another computer up here by my elbow, folks. If you uh, have any comments or questions or something you don't understand, put a comment or a question in the chat window and I'll I look at it periodically and try to uh, keep up with uh, your comments and questions. So I'm going to put just a few more darks in here. This this needs to have a little more uh, uh, coloration, I would say, so that it's not all just one blended color. I want some uh, change of value in here. So you can see these are really some sort of trees that are lining this peninsula that sticks out. And uh, some are a little taller than others. And uh, they, they stick above the mist back there behind them, and you can see them because uh, I'm making them stick up. Okay. I see your comment, Lindy, that you can hear me loud and clear. That's good. And you can see me too. That's even better. Um, I uh, 
I do have a browser that will now work with the new YouTube uh, studio, which I'm having a little trouble with that because they only let it work with the Chrome browser for me. So uh, that's not making me too happy either. But uh, anyway, this is the uh, the land back here and it where it joins the water. The thing I didn't put any blue in here is because I, if I put blue over this yellow, I'm going to get a lot of green and I don't want it to look like grass. Um, there is green in the ocean water for sure, but uh, this particular uh, little mountain that goes over this way <clears throat> is uh, darker yet and has a little bit of green in it. I'm going to use a little sap green uh, just to sort of green it up a little bit. I'm going to still use some of this Indian yellow and uh, continue to use my fan, uh, my uh, filbert brush here and see if I can uh, get this little mountain in over here. Kind of goes up to a, like a point almost and then uh, just kind of veers right off like that. Uh, I'm using Van Dyke Brown. It's darker. A little bit of sap green to give it some green and I need a little bit of uh, my um, dark sienna as well to give it a little more reddish color. So this is going to come down this way like that. And I can get some more dark. Actually a dark section that comes across like this. I'm getting a lot of uh, that underpainting is coming out. I'm getting a lot of uh, runny. The paint's very soft and uh, blends a lot right here. So I have to make it thicker. And uh, if I want it to stand out, I have to make it thicker. All right. And. Uh, over here, I'll make a little bit more a straight, yeah, something like that. It has a little more of a point on it than that, so I'll just make it slightly more pointed. I think that's very close. Okay, now, let's see if I want any of this color over here. Just for harmony's sake, I'm going to pull some of that green over here so it doesn't look like this is a uh, monochrome painting. I don't want it to look like a, a sepia study or something like that. I want it to look like it has some color in it. So I'll just pull a few of those over here. Uh, helps bring that color over this way. Okay, so let's stop on that for a second. I'm going to clean out this brush. And uh, we'll get going on the next phase. So my back area here, this is uh, where the water starts here. So I'm going to just sort of give it that sort of a, clean it up a little bit, clean that edge up a little, with a little bit. It's sort of uh, there. Okay, so I can leave that water light back there if I want. Um, I can start putting in a, a bit of um, some uh, waves and change that up a little bit. Um, try, let me see, I'm going to try something here. This may not work. I may go back and wipe it out, but I'm going to use a little bit of my uh, midnight black, a little bit of this ultraviolet. That's the only color I'm going to get that's got some blue in it is my uh, uh, this ultraviolet here. So I want to have some something that makes it look like there is some water back here. So this ultraviolet will go well with the uh, yellow and the uh, orange since it's a complementary color to the uh, So we'll just run this over here where that, there's a, so 
So I'll have that darker in here. Using my fan brush here. Ultraviolet, a little bit of uh, midnight black to keep it dark. And uh, I'm just sort of pulling it forward. And as I pull it forward, it's going to get lighter. Like this. And then there's another section over here on the right that's darker. It kind of goes under this. Like that. I'm going to run it all the way out here to straighten that edge out there. This sort of joins in here. Like that. Another whole section of, of um, wave action going on here, quite a bit, quite a bit of it. So my black, this uh, midnight black, when you uh, put some white in it, it sort of turns a little bit violet itself, and uh, so I'm adding a little bit of my ultraviolet to uh, continue that. Um, all right, that's a good start for uh, underlaying that all. It goes all the way over here. Let's see, I got this other mountain that's going to come down from about here down to way into there. So that's this uh, cliff that comes down here. I've got to have water, want this water to uh, run up the side of it and uh, run into it. So I'm going to just continue that. And uh, I'll come back and put some white white caps on this uh, to make it uh, sort of flow together. Okay, so that's not too bad. <clears throat> All right, <clears throat> let's. Why don't we go ahead and put this uh, cliff in here on the left side? Get it in position so I know where I've got to work. Um, it is going to be darker, going to be Van Dyke brown and some black. I'm going to use my big brush here. Um, and it starts about right in here. It just sort of comes down this way, like that. Comes down and sort of goes out there. This brush really spreads out, makes a lot of, so it kind of goes up this way and it's got another bit of a peninsula that sticks out here. Yeah, let's see if I can get that in there. Well, I've got this big brush going. It comes out of here like this and sort of, it's just a little bit of a little inlet there. Okay, so that's the underpainting for this cliff on the, on the left side. I think I'm going to clean out this brush finally. I uh, didn't do much to clean it out a while ago. Didn't do anything to clean it out, actually. Okay, let's uh, see what the next step is here. <clears throat> I think my clouds are okay. This area, I'm going to pretend that's the sun coming through there. Uh, these other um, mountains are, uh, this is much uh, sharper. It's got a sharper definition than the ones in the back because they're further away. Um, so now let's come in and see if we can take some of this titanium white, put it on my fan brush. Get just a touch of yellow in it. I don't want much yellow in it. I'm just getting a little bit of this uh, Indian yellow to just sort of lighten it up just a little, but I want it to be dominantly white. You can put some uh, liquid white in there. We're going to come in and put with a row of, um, it's probably really hard for you to even see that. Um, I don't know. It's going to lighten it up, going to make it whiter. I'm just sort of pushing, pulling, 
leaving little globs of paint stick up like there's a little bit of a some sort of wave action going on back there. Um, over here as we come down this way we're getting more wave action. So let's sort of take it and pull it over this blue that's underneath it. Um, And I'll make a little bit more back here to just sort of tie it together. So the yellow will help sort of tie it into the sky. The sky would be reflecting into this for sure. Right? So let's do that. We've got a little more here. There's some more wave action going on right in here in this area. So let's see if we can put some of those in. Actually, there's a, it's not too strong right in there. It's a, kind of smooth right through there. This is the area where the big action is, right in here. And there's a, so I'm trying to make this wave action more distinct as I come forward and uh, more of it whiter. It's not quite as faded as it is back behind it. I've got another little uh, peninsula that sticks out here that I want to stick in underneath. Um, okay, so let's leave that for now. Um, I'll get my, my uh, what did I do with my knife? Hello, there it is. All right. Um, this area here, I'm going to come down this mountainside now and see if I can make these edges much sharper do that by putting in this using this brush with a little bit or this uh, palette knife with a little roll of paint on it and just sort of bringing it down like this letting canvas pull off what it will using my midnight black van dyke brown dark sienna sort of all kind of mixed together um, this area here is where the little peninsula goes out, like right here. Let's put that in. Didn't quite get it in right yet. Let's put it in there again, like this there. All right. <clears throat> it needs to be, yeah, it's got some wave action coming back over the top of it, so we'll fix that in a minute. There's a bunch of waves that are coming over this area. So this is just whatever the canvas pulls off. I'm not trying to paint specific rocks or whatever. Uh, I'm trying to make it uh, look very rocky and craggly, craggy, craggy. I don't know the right word there. Um, but let's pull it down here. I'm gonna put a little ochre in there. It looks like I see a little bit of ochre in it. Maybe lighten it up at the bottom here a little bit uh, in this area. There is some ochre color I see in the uh, yeah, this sort of even runs out even further into the water out there like this and this all kind of comes down to a, a rocky bottom here that's this. I think it's getting some depth. I have a lot of difference in color. The uh, values are uh, a lot darker in the foreground, which they should be. And uh, they look lighter in the background, which they should. And uh, let's see here, this is going to not like this leave that to be sort of messy right there. This is going to be probably even darker here. Let me put a little my violet in it and see if that will help darken it down a little bit, maybe even more. Yeah. Put a few 
marks in here like that. Getting done pretty quickly with this, folks, actually. Um, I've been going about a half an hour. I don't want these to look like... See, you see my repeated knife strokes there, there, there. These are all clones, and I don't like that. I like to get rid of clones. So I'm going to adjust this a little bit so it doesn't look like the same knife stroke. Down here, there. Okay. I think that's looking pretty good. I might want to come back and put just a little more dark in some spots here to give it a little more texture, a little more uh, definition. Okay. Let's stop with that. <clears throat> All right. Now our our colors that we're using for the water. It's a lot of my violet. Let's see what this looks like here. That's really pretty dark, isn't it? It should be a little darker. There's an area across here that's a little bit darker. Um, I'm going to run it up this way. And uh, doing it with a knife, I'm, I'm using ultraviolet and just a little bit of uh, Indian yellow. They tend to gray each other down a little bit. The Indian yellow will gray the violet down. The violet will gray the yellow down. And you sort of get these colors that are showing up in here. Um, across here, this should be put some more in there. I'm going to put some of this other color. <laughs> Got it really grayed down there. But that's okay. Up here we got some stuff going on. So I want that yellow to come through because the the sunlight, the the uh, what's coming from the sunset is actually reflecting onto the water. So I don't want the water to be this bright bright sky blue that you would normally see in this painting if I were just following the the color palette that is on the painting. Uh, so I'm just uh, sort of mixing it up, adding some darks in here, giving ourselves some um, different tones, different values. Uh, so it's all being made up pretty much. It's almost like a like an abstract might be, where I'm just sort of kind of list, listening to the listening to the painting, seeing what it needs. These are a little darker in here. It's really too dark. Um, so let's blend it out a little bit. Come back with a maybe some white over the top of it here to sort of. running into the bottom of my easel down here. So I make it, it's looking rough and tumbly here, which is okay because it's hitting these rocks. Um, so let's leave it at that. Let's put a little more in this area even. There's a mixture of color and it's got some browns and kind of stuff going on down here. Okay, um, we've been going about uh, 30, 38 minutes, 35 minutes. Let's fill this out over here with some more of this color. I'm just picking up whatever's on the canvas and uh, flowing it out this way and uh, kind of making it lighter and lighter as I come forward. Uh, almost into white with this sort of uh, yellow under underglow, if you will, under painting. Uh, so I'm 
merging it together and leaving it messy in some areas, leaving it smooth in some areas. I'll come back and put a few more um, crashing waves in here. Um, but basically, it's it, you don't have to do a lot. This is basically a beach, and uh, so we'll, we want it to be rough in some areas and smooth in some areas. And uh, hitting the bottom of my easel here. There we go. Okay, so I, it, the water is very calm up here next to the, the shore. Um, so let's put a few rough marks in here. Let's put some of this. I want to get more uh, paint on my brush than that. So a little bit of the uh, liquid white will help because it'll go on easier and it will stay on top easier. Like this. Want this to go flaring off into this area like it's a big uh, crash of the wa of the wave. Want it to be bigger, and then these over here are gonna. can't be very big out here or they'd be really crashing into the into the water into the beach and they don't really crash into the beach that much they're sort of um, tapered off they're really not too much to them by the time they get to the beach here so let's just put a few more of these waves here let them so move around. I'll come back and put a few darks underneath those to, to give them the um, contrast you need to actually see what they are. These are sort of like this. Put in a few things there. Just little bits of waves and sort of stuff. This area here, actually, I think this is an area where we could use the knife. I'll see if I can make that work. I've seen uh, Bob Ross do that with uh, his knife and sort of come in here and put in a... like that, where it has a sort of a shadow underneath it. Something like this, maybe back here. Um, something like that. I'll put some more dark back in this area underneath some of these waves to uh, kind of give them a, let them stand out just a little more than they do. Um, it's almost too much right there. Want some dark? You need the dark to see the light, and uh, so put a few dark places here that we can uh, amplify these waves a little bit, so it looks like we're seeing underneath them. <coughs> the only dark I'm using here is ultraviolet. I might put a little midnight black in it, but uh, pretty much these are. Uh, put one up here like this. I need to go back and pull that over again once you put in the, the dark underneath. Sometimes you need to go back and pull it back over to make it look right. So it's sort of a rough and tumble sort of um, see here. Let's see if I can make these like that. Put some more of these. Just sort of, they're coming at a couple different ways. Some are coming in this way and some are coming in that way. 
So I'll just sort of like that. This is all smooth in here. probably mess with this for a couple hours trying to get those uh, these ways to look more realistic but I think this is gonna have to about do it um, now Lindy's gonna tell me don't forget to put some birds in if she hasn't already. Hello from Brazil, Denise. Hi, from Brazil, welcome. Just decided to look at my computer here. Okay, let's see, put a few more marks like that. Something like that. Just a little shadow under there helps make that look like that's a very small type of wave coming in. They all pretty much dissipate by the time they get to the shore. Um, and I think the yellow has stayed in there. I've kept that tone of this Indian yellow in here. I'm going to put just a little more down here in the front because I want it to sort of reflect that sky more um, and look as if it's uh, getting close to land here. All right, something like that. Step back and look at it, see if it needs something. Um, I might put just a few um, touches of this yellow um, sort of reflections on some spots here on these craggy areas so that you definitely see a little bit of a no, I don't, don't know if I like that I'm just going to pull it down here um, thinking one other thing I'm thinking this mountain back here needs to be just that a little bit darker, I think. I'm gonna. That's way too dark, but that's a start. I'll use that as my blending color. Bring it down. It gives a little more distinction, a little more definition. It actually shows some shadows. See, I don't have any um, any shadows going on here because they are away from the sun. If the sun's behind them. We should have some amount of darkness here. Let's put a little more at the bottom here, maybe. Something like that helps. I think it helps that stand out so that it's not... Uh, I don't want it to be too uh, blended into the background. Here I'm going to put a few more dark edges, black, midnight black. Um, I want these to stand out so you know they're, they're touching the water but they're, they have this um, distinction so they're not just um, blended into the water. They're not part of the water. This sort of gets kind of muddy and flows out into this area here. Alright, I kind of like that better. I like pulling this out a little bit more. I think it helps balance it. Um, okay, um, so just to uh, be consistent, I'm going to put a couple of birds in the sky here. I should usually use an odd number, they say. They say, 
So where would they be? Well, let's see. I'm going to put them over here. I don't want to put them over here. I got a lot of stuff here. If I'm going to balance anything, I'll put them over here on this side, right? They can't be too big. If you make them too big, come on, got to get some more thinner on here to make that a thinner color so that it goes over what's there. If you make them too big, if you imagine where they are out in the ocean, maybe two, three hundred yards out there, if they fly into you, if they're so big, when they get to you, they're going to be like a pterodactyle. So you want to make them fairly small. My brush has got a funny tip on it. It's not rounded like I want it. And let's put a third one out there to be properly put this little guy down here. We'll put him over here like that. All right, I think that's about enough. Um, and I'll take the palette off and let you uh, see what I've got done here. Hope you can see that very well. Um, I'm going to throw my signature over here, maybe, like right here. See if this will work. All right. <clears throat> I hope you like that. I hope you give it a try and uh, leave me some comments. I, uh, the other thing I found out about YouTube is, is that because they've had all this problem with videos for kids and trying to keep bad comments off, they've restricted comments. So to get my uh, videos monetized, <clears throat> I've made them for kids. But when I did that, they eliminated all my comments. So all the comments you've put on are now gone for some reason. So I've got another little battle going with YouTube right now over where are the comments and why aren't they there. So this video has been marked not for kids and uh, I don't do anything that's offensive anyway. So I don't know uh, how to mark my videos so that I can get paid for them and you can have comments on them. So I have a uh, question into the uh, my partner at uh, YouTube to uh, explain this to me. So hopefully your comments will survive and uh, We'll be able to keep them attached to this video. Um, that's it for today. Um, please check out my Facebook uh, site, my website, uh, my Patreon site. Uh, please subscribe if you're not a subscriber and please uh, share this with your friends if you like my videos and you like my painting style. I'd appreciate it. So I think that's all I want to say for now. So until I see you next time, this is Larry Hamilton saying so long for now. Bye-bye.